let's move on to the to real content. So let's see what um, Cody is, what these three words actually mean, shift left performance. And remember that shift left is about automating the inspection of the code of an application. So you will see that in the in development software tools, you can find different tools that automate code inspection for different purposes. The differential feature of Kodi is that it automates code inspection focusing on performance, something that is key for the HPC communities or for any code running on a supercomputer like Permuter. And this is what makes actually Kodi different from other tools available in the in the in the ecosystem. So shift left performance is about automating the inspection of source code of applications from tens of lines to th hundreds, thousands, or millions of lines of code very quickly in seconds or minutes to produce information insights from them, the application that help the developer understand which are the performance issues. And at that point, you will start a journey and iterative process to go through each of these possible insights to understand which is the problem and how to fix it. Okay, so this is essentially what shift left performance means. Shift left, automate code inspection. So save a lot of time to the developer in automating repeated and time consuming quest, uh, tasks that can be automated. And performance, the specialization in reporting insights and information that will help you to modify your code to improve the performance when running on a computer. So from that perspective, this first part of the of our presentation is essentially about that. Um, so we will start with an introduction and a motivation of why shift left is needed and why we believe it's part of our vision that it is not properly covered with existing tools and there is room for a tool like OD that is also complementary to all the rest of tools that you are already using as part of your development workflow. Second, uh, we will also provide you um, one, one pillar of the approach is uh, the software to automate the inspection of the source code of the application. But the other is the knowledge. We have a lot of knowledge spread in our community, a few experts that have years or decades of experience in performance optimization that cannot help to optimize or assist all the developers in how to optimize the code, all that knowledge. We are compiling all that knowledge and writing it down in the form of an open catalog of coding rules that ensure best performance from the point of view of performance optimization. What this means is that the typical code changes and the motivation and the issues and the reasons why a given code change, data structure, loop restructuring, um, organization of the code, why the experts make those decisions, you will be able to learn that through a set of rules and through an open catalog that is and is the vision of Appentra to keep it uh, open and public uh, in, in the website. So um, first pillar, the software to automate code inspection of real applications. The second pillar, the knowledge and writing down the knowledge in simple rules that from the novice, novice developer to the expert developer can really understand. We can have a developer that is expert in optimizing for memory, that, but can be a novice programmer for GPUs or the other way around. So having all this open catalog of knowledge is really interesting both for the experts and for the novices or for the newcomers to performance optimization uh, techniques. Uh, and finally, uh, what we will be doing is we will be splitting the process in two major stages. A stage that we call discover, a stage that we call adopt. Discover is about producing the performance optimization report with a listing of all the insights that Kodi can produce for your code. So this should be relatively easy or straightforward to obtain. Where the iterative process of the developer starts is in the adopt phase, where you need to guide the performance optimization process by identifying the hot spots or the parts of the code that are most time consuming and request from Kodi all the insights and coding rules that apply to the hot spots of your application. This is what we call adopt. It's about 
adopting and implement, understanding and implementing the best, prof, perf, best co the coding practices available in the catalog that the tool has found in your code and naturally decide how to modify the code to make it run faster. Okay. And as part of this, at the end of this deck, this is like this presentation, you will be seeing a live demonstration of Kodi using the Pi example, the same example that we propose for the lab, so that you can have a first experience in seeing how to use Kodi, how the output of Kodi or the reports of Kodi look like. And later, you can do your own hands on by using the same example and following the sequence of commands that we propose and that our team, uh, Ulysses, will be using in the live demo. Okay, so in order to understand why Kodi is relevant now and is expected to continue to be relevant in the future is the ever-growing uh, size and complexity of software projects. It is something that you can see in the HPC community. If we compare source codes or application codes that started years or decades ago and the size of the application codes we are managing today, this the project size and complexity has never stopped uh, growing. And even now, it is growing faster than ever because we need to solve more problems and faster. So just as an example, if you consider a reference software project like the software powering the F-35 firefighter, of Lockheed Martin, this was estimated to have around 25 million slices of code. But if we look at the average connected car that we see on the streets today, and that some, some of us can be or could be driving in the future, it is estimated to have more than 150 million slices of code. So this is just a representative example of the growing size of complexity of software projects. And what is driving this, um, this growing size and complexity. We as users demanding more and more functionality in software from our smartphones to simulation codes running on, on supercomputers. And the second driver is essentially uh, the availability of modern hardware from smartphones to supercomputers. And essentially the same multi-core, the same instruction set architectures, the same vector instructions that are powering our, our supercomputers are powering the same processors that we use in our smartphones. So what we see is that more and more functionality and as users demanding this functionality running faster with a great user experience is what motivates and makes the need of having a tool like Kodi that enables to automate code inspection looking at big source pro code projects from the performance lens. So moving forward, uh, so one of the key things is to have software that runs fast enough. We may have simulation codes that, that start running for hours and by using GPUs run in minutes. But also we may want to uh, improve the user experience of a post-processing tool that a scientist might be using. We don't need such a huge computer intensive capacity, but we still need to improve the performance of the visualization part of a tool that is provided to the computational scientist or to a, a chemical chemistry engineer as part of the workflow. So the key, it is key to have software that runs fast on modern computers. And the hardware is here to help us. We all have seen the great increase in performance, for instance, from Cori to Perlmutter. While preparing this course, we have seen the same examples running on Cori and running on Perlmutter just by recompiling the code running faster. But the, the hardware is here to help, but the hardware is not the whole solution to this problem. And this is why we are here today. The problem, the real challenge is the ability of the software developer, of the computational scientist, of the programmer in the end, to write the code in such a way that run faster on modern computers. And this applies from server class processors powering Perlmutter to low power, processors powering our smartphones. So in the end, developers, as programmers and developers, we need more, more sophisticated tools that can help us to automate tasks that are very time consuming, are repeated tasks that we do once and again. And we really want tools that can automate that so that we can focus on real, really added value 
in and put our expertise uh, to the service of producing better, much better code for the community. So if you look at the tools of uh, software development tools, we can see that there are profilers, there are compilers, there are IDEs, and there are also uh, some tools that are called static code analyzers. Static code analyzers in the end are tools that can automate the inspection of the source code, obtain insights about the code without actually executing the code. In contrast to a dynamic uh, tool that requires running the code to collect information about the application at runtime, static code analyzers have the ability to understand how the application will behave at runtime without running the application, just by looking at the code, a source code written by the programmer. And if we look at the space of software static code analysis tools that are available in the market, we can see tools specialized in finding security bugs. This is essential for the industry, from automotive to military or aerospace. Others are specialized in finding bugs, bugs related to bad usage of the programming language or of a given standard specification. And others even are specialized in compliance. For some software to really be allowed legally to be deployed as part of a product that, for instance, a doctor uses, uses in a hospital, the software needs to be certified to be compliant with coding standards. So static code analyzers are, have also been traditionally used to enforce the compliance of application code with given uh, coding standards. But what we have seen is that all of these tools are enabling to shift left. So automate code inspection, security, bugs, and compliance. But none of these tools so far has enabled to shift left performance. And performance is a critical part for our community. And this is what makes a uh, Kodi unique. It takes the benefits of a static code analysis tools in pro providing these reports running very, very fast while you are developing your code. And it provides you insights relating to performance, how to improve the performance of your code, how to find bugs of code that will run fast, that will run incorrectly. A code that runs faster but produces incorrect results is useless. So Kodi, for the first time, is enabling to shift left performance. This means automated the inspection of real applications of source code by providing insights from the point of view of performance, how to improve the performance or detect defects, issues related to performance in our application codes. Um, so the, the quest, first question is who can actually use Kodi? Kodi can be used by anyone in any area developing code written in CC++ today. And in the near future, we are working hard to also provide Fortran support. This is why we say that everything you will see today in the near future will be also available for the Fortran programming language that is very widely used in our community. So in order to prove that, what we have been doing is during the last months of the last year is we have selected reference application codes that are used in different application domains from audio codecs to compression tools, to simulation tools like SPEC, to the Linux kernel, to simulation codes in astrophysics like HackMK that is part of the Coral uh, benchmarks of the DOE. So what we wanted to do here, we the purpose was not to really improve the performance, show that we can improve the performance of that code, is to prove that Kodi can parse and analyze and produce the report for codes from 10 lines of code and codes like the Linux kernel that has almost one and a half millions of lines of code and provide that information from seconds to just uh, a few minutes in of uh, computation power in our in a laptop. So here you can see that LAME, uh, SIP, SPEC, Chromax, um, FFmpeg, Linux kernel, with the well-known NASA parallel benchmarks, the MATMUL example we will be using uh, today in the labs, all of these codes have been used and have passed and been analyzed in seconds to minutes by Kodi. So this gives you an idea of the production level of the matureness of the tool. Any project written in C++ and Fortran can be analyzed and can, we can produce the performance optimization report. So 
what are the benefits? And you have these benefits probably very, very clear, but I want to emphasize three main benefits. First, you will be able to deliver applications faster. You will be able to develop your application in less time. And applications that, that also run faster on modern low power hardware, okay? Or modern processors. Second, by automating many of the tasks that you need to do or an expert could do manually by scanning thousands or, or millions of lines of code manually, by automating this process, you can get in just a few minutes, a report that would take hours, days, or weeks of manual code inspection. So definitely it will enable to save many, many hours in the, in the software development process. So in the end, save costs in the software development process. And finally, one of the things that we also emphasize and will be seen here in this, in this uh, training is it also provides a repeatable, scalable, and robust solution to integrate performance optimization in the software development lifecycle, in the software development process. And this is important because instead of relying on the having a happy idea on how to optimize a given part of code or having access to an expert that has optimized a similar code in the past, instead of having that, we can use the same process to produce the reports and, and, and follow the steps suggested by the Codi tool to actually make code changes that enable your software to run faster. So repeatable, systematic, and scalable process or approach to the performance optimization report, the uh, performance optimization uh, process. So having said this, how can we provide this systematic and repeatable performance optimization process assistance? If you look at the fundamental challenges you need to address when you are optimizing your code, from running on a sequential processor faster, for running on a multi-core processor faster, to running faster on a GPU. In the end, you need to address essentially three main challenges. Memory traffic control. We all know that the interaction between the CPU, the central processing unit, and the memory system, all the memory hierarchy, main memory, the cache memory, this interaction is key for performance in modern systems. Second, if we focus on the processor capabilities, Server class processors that are powering supercomputers and even smartphones have very advanced instruction set architectures, very advanced instructions that you need to use efficiently in your applications for your application to run faster. Particularly, it's particularly interesting the vectorization part. We typically believe that compilers can do all that is possible for, to vectorize our code. We will see later in September, October, uh, second part of the training, that by using a static code analysis from Kodi, you can change your code to help the compiler to even do a much better job that they can do by default, just by developing your code in a vectorization friendly manner. And finally, the third challenge, multi-threading. When, when we say multi-threading here, we say to create multiple threads that run on the CPU side and they cooperate to run the code in parallel correctly. But also multiple threads, we have thousands of threads inside the GPU. And we need to guarantee that all the threads spawn on the GPU, cooperate in a timely manner and in a correct manner to produce the correct result. So in the end, multi-threading in a broad sense is about solving a problem, having different uh, threads or pro threads that cooperate to the resolution of that problem, both on the CPU side and on the GPU side. So um, these are the main three challenges you need to have in mind. Minimize memory traffic, maximize usage of vectorization, and multi exploit multiple threads. So in order to optimize your application, it is typically recommended to follow the six steps that you see in the screen. Look at the steps one, two, and three. They are not about parallelism. They are not about GPU, multi-threading, or vectorization. They are just about writing your sequential code in a way that is hardware-friendly, in a manner that is performance-friendly. For instance, step number one, 
scale, sequential scalar optimization. Use instructions in your program that enable to use advanced instructions in your processor. Step number two, typically in your loops, try to simplify the control flow. If you can, can avoid having a branch or an if then else or a switch instruction within a loop, and if it is possible, please avoid it because having that conditional control flow in your loops will only prevent many hardware optimizations or compiler optimizations from happening uh, uh, automatically. So optimizing and minimizing, simplifying the control flow of your, our applications is important for CPU and GPU, vectorization, multi-threading and offloading. Step number three, focus on this, sequential memory optimization. We have seen codes that just by making a better usage of the memory access patterns, the codes were uh, speed, uh, were running two, three, four, up to six, six, six times faster with no parallelism at all, just by making an efficient usage of the memory subsystem. So sequential optimization, steps one, two, and three are important for sequential code, for code that is already multi-threaded, for MPI code that is uh, launching uh, MPI ranks tasks that need to be run in the end sequentially in our course or processors, and also important for GPU. All the threads that are going to be executed on the GPU cores also need to have simple control flows and need to make an efficient usage of memory. So putting effort on steps one, two, and three, in general, pays off for the optimization of your applications to any, to any uh, computer system. Finally, once we make this kind of optimizations in our code, it's usually recommended to go to steps four, five, and six. And these are different flavors or different types of parallelism. So from vectorization that is typically well supported by compilers, but we can make a lot to help the compilers to make even a much better job, multi-threading or offloading to the GPUs. So in the end, going and offloading code to the GPU is really very challenging. And typically you need to address programming challenges that are typically addressed in steps one to five. So this is something we will be seeing in the path uh, towards GPU programming that we will we are proposing in this training. Okay, so remember we said it is important to have software that shifts left performance, that automates the inspection of the code to produce a report with information that is relevant for us as programmers to understand which are the problems in terms of performance and how to fix them. So the problem is, what, what is the knowledge base? What is the set of rules that we need to consider to ensure that our application code follows performance best practices. So this is what essentially we are producing and curating as part of our work in Codi. So we, you have a website, public and open, codi.com slash knowledge that you can uh, browse. And you will see that there are rules in four categories. We call them recommendations, opportunities, defects, and remarks. These are different types of actions or insights about the code that Kodi can provide and that are relevant and very important for performance optimization. And as the software is intended for experts and also for novice, use, novice programmers, we have also added a glossary, glossary of key concepts that you need to understand. And in the end, each action, each element of the catalog has links to glossary concepts, where you can see an easy explanation of concepts that you need to understand to really understand why applying a given action will produce code that runs faster. So today we have around 40 recommendations in the catalog, three types of opportunities, 11 defects, 14 remarks, and 22 entries of documentation and key concepts that are enclosed in the glossary section, okay? So feel free to navigate it and take a look at it. So it is quite a lot of information. So you can browse the catalog by these categories, recommendations, opportunities, defects, and remarks, but also an important capability of the software is that it allows you to navigate the catalog from the point of view of the stages of the performance optimization roadmap. So here we are 
uh, displaying four stages of the, of the software development roadmap. Remember, we said steps one, two, and three are about sequential optimizations. This is the left column. So we have today maybe 15 uh, rules that enable to improve the performance of sequential code. We also have rules and actions in the catalog specialized in vectorization. And moving forward to GOS GPU, others specialized in multi-threading and specialized in offloading to accelerators like GPUs. So the, an important capability of the software is that enables you to browse and filter out all the insights or all the actions that are not relevant for you at a given moment. If you want to focus on vectorization or on memory optimization, you want the tool to report the four, five, for example, actions that are relevant for memory optimization and filter out to not display other 20 actions that may be about offloading to GPUs, okay? So that you can concentrate at each, at each moment in time in the actions that, that are really relevant for you. So the software, we will see it in the hands-on that provides these capabilities uh, for you. So moving forward, um, for those of you that are familiar with the static code analyzers, this will be uh, probably uh, very easy uh, to understand. For those of you that it is the first time that you will be using a static code analyzer, it is important to understand how a static code analyzer behaves. And this is what we summarize with these uh, seven uh, valid points that you see on the right of this slide. First, a static code analyzer scans, inspects the source code of your application without executing it. This is very important for productivity reasons. Second, what is the output of this code inspection? Is to produce a report of human readable, actionable recommendations that locate where is the problem and how to fix it. And describe a solution or at least put you on the path on how to solve that problem. So scan and produce a report. Third, compliance. In particular for performance, it is important that all the insights, all the actions, including the report, help to promote performance optimization best practices that are aligned with the six stages of the performance optimization report uh, roadmap. Sequential optimizations, simplify the control flow, efficient usage of memory, vectorization, multi-threading, and offloading. Okay, so compliance with the performance optimization roadmap. Next, optimization. How can you use that information? In what platforms can you use this information? In general, today, we provide a set of hardware agnostic uh, rules that you can use in any microprocessor, modern microprocessor. x86, ARM, or power processors are both uh, can, can, uh, can benefit from using the applying the rules recommended by Codi. And also accelerators, you will see here today how you can use these capabilities to generate, create very quickly code that runs fast on the GPU. And this is about producing a report with insights. What can I do? Where are the problems of my code? And what are the solutions to those problems? Also static code analyzers have also a tendency, a trend to provide what is called automated fixes. In general, what this is, that the tool can rewrite the source code of your application to actually fix the problem. This is what here in this NERS uh, event, we refer to when we say that Kodi can automatically annotate your source code with OpenMP and OpenACC pragmas. So you will see that the tool can automatically add these pragmas in your code so that you just have to recompile and run the application and measure the performance improvement. And finally, the last two things are more about integration in professional software development uh, life cycles. Like if your projects or your teams are using Jenkins, continuous integration frameworks, then you will probably be interested in creating your extensions or your own uh, set of rules that you want to enforce in your application, or you will want to know how to use Kodi to launch and produce the report from a Jenkins continuous integration framework. So these two last items, we will not be addressing them in this 
training series at NERC during this year. So focus on scan, report, compliance for optimization and providing automated fixes, in this case for GPUs. Okay, so this is a quick introduction. So remember, everything can be summarized in three single words, shift, left, and performance. So how does the report that Cody produces looks like? Okay, when you get started, you will be using the entry-level tool that is called PW Report. When you use PW Report, we provide you and we recommend using an entry-level report that is called dash dash evaluation. As you see here in the screen, it provides you with a table. This is kind of a screening of your application. It reports for the different files or modules of your application, how many lines of code were actually analyzed, how long did it take to analyze that part of the code, typically something in the seconds uh, timeframe, and how many actions have been found. Here you can see that Kodi found more than 100 actions in a project of image processing called Kani uh, Edge Filter that consists of more or less 1,000 lines of code. So from these 100 and 14 actions. The next information that you get in this entry level report is the split of all the actions in the six stages of the performance optimization roadmap. Look at the columns from left to right. A scalar optimization, serial scalar means using a, the processor instruction set efficiently. Serial control means simplifying the control flow of your application. Serial memory, making an efficient usage of the memory subsystem. And the last three, vectorization, multi-threading, and offloading are the what you uh, what would you imagine they, they they are. So in this report, you get an insight of how many actions I can see in my code and which ones correspond to each of the uh, stages of the performance optimization report. And the report is, all, is always uh, configured in such a way that in the end you will get this suggestions that you can see here as part of the final part of any report, where Kodi is going to suggest other invocations of the tool that you can use to dig deeper into a particular uh, part of the performance of the insights provided by the tool. So the second step with which we typically refer to as adopt is when you select a hot spot, you select an action, you want to know everything about that action. So here you can see the details of a remark that is saying that Kodi has predicted that it doesn't make sense to execute a given loop in vector mode because it will run slower. And it provides you a reason because there are strided memory accesses that will make the, the vectorization not efficient. And also there is here, for instance, an opportunity to execute a particular loop or piece of code in multi-threaded mode. So if you follow the suggestions given by the action that tells you which is the problem, which is the, how to fix it, provides you with suggestions of other commands that you can run to get more information, as well as it points you to the open catalog of uh, performance optimization rules, where you can see more information to understand everything about that particular action. If you follow that action here, for instance, by copy and pasting one of the suggested commands, and if you compile and run the code not optimized and the code optimized, if you do things properly, you will be able to reduce the runtime of your application. In this case, from 14 seconds to 8.5 seconds, just by adopting and implementing one of the actions recommended by the software. So, and this is an iterative process that you use that you follow guided by the, all the insights provided by the performance optimization report. So in the end, if you focus properly on the hotspots, you focus properly on the key actions that are relevant for your application, you will be able to reduce the runtime of your application. This is one of the NAS parallel benchmarks, the CG conjugate gradient, running faster on, in this case, on, a, on an AMD Ryzen uh, processor. Uh, finally, to finish this part of the presentation, um, here you can see 
the six stages of the performance optimization roadmap from rows two, three, four, down to six. You can see how these stages apply to microprocessors, microcontrollers, or other devices like GPUs. And on the right-hand side, you can see examples of codes that are running faster thanks to using and, and implementing CODE performance optimization recommendations. And there are codes running from 17% faster to 96% faster. Of course, you know, this depends pretty much on the type of application, the programming environment, the runtime of and the hardware in the end. All of this in the end, all of these elements have an impact on the actual performance of your application. But at least what this provides you is a systematic, more predictable pathway to performance optimization following the performance optimization roadmap from stage one sequential optimizations to stage six of loading to GPUs. So we will finish this part of the presentation um, with two, two slides. So how do we use this in practice? How are we going to use this in practice in the labs? Okay, uh, here you have the typical iterative process to optimize the performance. You start from a source code of your application. You typically are recommended to profile your application. Don't try to optimize your application by brute force. Try to optimize every single loop. Do it in a smarter manner. Do a profiling. This always pays off. Identify the key functions or loops that consume most of the runtime and start working of those on those that are the hot spots. And then continue working in the list of hot spots reported by the profiling. So once you have this hot spot, Kodi can help you with the rest. Kodi will not do profiling for you. Will not help you in doing profiling. For that, you have excellent uh, profiling tools available at NERSC or available in, in our development tools. But look at here. Here we provide six typical use cases that you can use once you have identified and profiled your application use and have the hot spots of your application. So in the labs, we will be seeing probably a use cases one and two. And use cases three to six that have to deal with more real applications, build systems, compilers, vectorization, all of these things will probably be addressed in the second part of the training series in September and October. So with one and two use cases, we have enough information to speed up applications in on GP, uh, running on well-motor or on GPUs. Okay, and this is all. So I hope I have been able to, um, to transmit uh, how Kodi can help in different ways. First, providing a software that shifts less performance, automated code inspection, specializing in performance. Second, we provide you with a catalog, the open catalog of knowledge that we are curating the knowledge of the experts and writing it down in such a way that a novice programmer or an expert programmer can understand it to recycle himself or to learn a new area of performance optimization that they have not learned in the past. And third, and more important, um, we integrate all of these capabilities in the typical software development uh, process, specializing in performance. But this is what we provide as you different use cases that you can use in different points of the performance optimization process guided by profiling. So um, I, I'm going to stop uh, here with this part. And now I'm going to hand it over to uh, my colleague Ulysses. Uh, Ulysses, if you are ready, Ulysses will be providing you a live demonstration of Kodi using the Pi example, the same source code that you will be using in the first lab. So before providing you with step-by-step -step instructions to reproduce what you are going to see uh, in the live demonstration, let's have a first sense of how Kodi usability is and what capabilities Kodi can provide you on Permuter. Ulysses, are you ready? Okay, so we are going to make a, a brief live demo of how to analyze using Kodi uh, the by source code. So 
now uh, the, the, the first thing that you have to do in permuter to load Kodi is first obviously load the model because we don't do it's not default loaded. And now we have the last version of Kodi, the, the last release that is 1.3.1. Now, uh, so we're going to analyze Pi. That is a well-known algorithm. Let's make a brief check. And here it is. It's the, the simplest sequential version of, of P, Pi, sorry. Um, let's now uh, analyze it. The W report is the entry level tool that Kodi provides to make the static code analysis. P dot C. And this is the entry level report, which gives you the first overview of the metrics gathered by the analysis of the input file. So in this case, it detected two actions. This is the most important data that is shown in this table. And it's split among these six uh, categories that Manuel already explained. And as default, Cody disables multithreading and offloading opportunities, but we can enable them with include tax all as the Cody is suggesting in the third suggestion. We can actually copy paste it and now uh, it shows four actions, one multi frame and one off for offloading. We can increase the level of detail that the tool uh, is, is reporting us with level two. We can add, and now it shows a third um, table, which lists the, the loops of the given source file uh categorized by the difficulty uh, that it has so this is uh, used for users to to start focusing on the low difficulty loops and in this case it makes no sense because it is only one loop and it's a very simple file but when we are analyzing big uh, projects uh, it is usually a good idea to start analyzing and focusing on the low difficulty loops. And now we are going to follow the second suggestion uh, that is to uh, execute uh, in, in both without a report with actions. So because now we know that we have four actions and the type of that actions, but we want to list them all individually. And now this fails because um, call the um is is made to uh, focus uh, to make a user to focus on hotspot functions so you can select a function or um a, a loop by the number so p dot c colon and the function in this case is main because the hotspot is located in the main function and Right, now we can see that this is the only loop that it has, and it has three opportunities to uh, detect. Multi-threading, SIMD, and offloading. The SIMD, offload, the SIMD opportunity uh, is associated with this remark 11 that tells that the vectorization cost model of code is that states the loop might benefit from explicit vectorization. So it's not conclusive about if it, whether we improve the performance or not. So in, in this case, you have to try it if you want. But now in this course, we're going to uh, focus on offloading opportunities. So if we want to increase again the level of detail, we can follow the first suggestion, level two. And now we can see more data in the opportunity three, suggesting us to invoke other commands, PW loops that we won't follow it now, and PW directives. This is the, the tool that Kodi provides to rewrite the code and generate, in this case, pragmas. The first one is for generating OpenMP pragmas, and the second one for generating OpenACC pragmas. We're going to invoke both because we want to test them both. 
but we are not going to use the in place flag. We're going to use dash O. So we don't rewrite the same input file and we want to generate another. Uh, it will be called B. Uh, OMP post.c and it's successfully generated. Now we're going to make the same for the ACC. And now let's look at the code. The first one with the open MP pragmas for offloading is. And here is the same P, but with the pragma added automatically. And now let's look at the OpenACC version. Oh, sorry, what did I touch? And here we have. These pragmas are the equivalent, but for OpenACC. And now we have prepared a, a script for compiling the three versions, the sequential, the op OpenMP, and the OpenACC, and it will execute them. So we can, let's see. Yes, it's this one, okay. So, so the sequential version, 1.3 seconds, open MP half a second, and open ACC 0 0.2 seconds. And well, that's how uh, we use code for analyzing Pi. <laughs> Good, thank you. Thank you, Ulysses. So essentially, what you have seen is the, the one of the intended uses of, of Kodi, that is, use it to produce the entry-level report with all of these metrics, high-level numbers in terms of number of actions actually found in your code. And how by using the suggestions of the tool, the tool guides you through different command line evocations that you can use to understand each of the actions, what type of action it is. We've seen examples of opportunities for vectorization, multithreading, offloading, and examples of remarks. Additional information that is important for the code. And we will also see in other labs, opportunities and recommendations. So all of these types of actions are important because they are actionable. And in particular, the opportunities are the actions that will enable us to use PW directives to annotate the source code with OpenMP and OpenACC pragmas that we need to recompile and run and check the performance on a particular platform. What this whole process guarantees is that whenever a particular loop is identified as an opportunity, Kodi guarantees that the semantics of the code is, can be executed in parallel, either using vectorization, multithreading, or offloading, depending on the opportunity that has been identified. And also this guarantees that uh, Kodi will provide you source code rewriting capabilities to annotate the code with OpenMP and OpenACC pragmas. So this is one of the um, use cases that we described in the, in, the, in the presentation. And ideally, this is where we want to be. If for any of our codes, we are able to succeed in code generating and identifying many of these opportunities, we are where we want to be because we can unlock the code source code writing capabilities to quickly generate uh, OpenMP or OpenACC enable code for the host TPU or for the GPU, just by changing some of the parameters in PW directives. So just to want to point out this example, pi.sh actually ran on the login node. So we have, there's a launch.sh uh, that you can um, submit the jobs to run on the GPU nodes and see the performance on GPU as well. <laughs> 